Hey everyone, it's Andrew with Alpha Munitions. Uh, we're starting a new series of videos that are gonna go over uh, certain aspects of the precision shooting world as it relates to reloading, shooting, and our brass cases and chambers. One of the first videos we wanna do today is key fire dimensions of the brass. We'll start with some of the standard ones. We're gonna look at overall length, shoulder datum, neck diameter. Those are the key easy ones. So before we fire it, we want to measure the shoulder datum. We want to measure that overall length and get the loaded neck diameter so that you can compare them once you fire the brass. Uh, once you do shoot it, again, going back, measuring that shoulder datum, seeing how far you grew on that first firing, and then understanding what you need to set it back uh, for reloading. I always like to do for a bulk gun, thou and a half to two thou. Then for a gas gun, you want to be that three, three and a half, maybe four thou range. Neck diameters, I like to see about a three thou difference between your fire neck to diameter or four, three to four thou uh, between your fire neck diameter and your loaded uh, diameter. That's going to give that bullet uh, the case room to grow and a good clean release of the bullet so you're not interfering or grasping or holding on to those uh, those bullets and having variation from case to case. Uh, overall length, once you fire it and you got to set it back and trim it, uh, I, I like to see it about 10 thou short of Sammy min spec. That way when chambers are cut, sometimes you get reamer wear on those leading edges. Uh, so that front, uh, the, the chamber area in this section, right at the mouth of the case, can be a little radius. Uh, so that way, if you cut, keep it 10 thou short, that's going to that's gonna give you space to make sure there's no kind of cone or, or, or something grasping or constricting that neck in that area. With those measurements done, uh, I always check then also the extract group base diameters. Uh, and again, you can do this virgin and then fired. One of the critical dimensions for pressure signs is our base diameter. Our virgin brass comes out uh, for our 308 case at around 468. And then now if you see once it's fired, if you get up to like 4715, 472, that is either very hot, high pressure load, uh, or it's potentially uh, an oversized chamber. Uh, typical to our brass because of our OCD technology and our superior strength in the case head, uh, you will not get that much growth at the base unless there's something going on there. Uh, we usually see growth to about 469, 4695. Uh, over multiple firings, it may grow out to the 47-ish area. That's a totally fine typical pressure. You can keep running that load. Uh, once you start going up to the 472s, that's when you know, you're plastically deforming too much. You're going to get sticky bolt problems. If you're getting a lot of variation in extractor groove diameter, that means your brass is flowing in those areas. Uh, that's not good uh, for multiple reasons. One is that you're probably changing your internal volume uh, and you're going to have to do further load development as you see that brass move in the base of the case. Uh, and so that means that you're going to have to reset your dies, rework your load, uh, and it can, can cause some small issues here and there. Again, the OCD technology that we have, we don't have those issues. We don't see the excessive movement in these areas. That's pretty much the typical dimensions I like to check once I fire a piece of brass and from Virgin. Um, you can add in any, any ones that you guys like to check in the comments or if you have any questions or further details you want to talk about or discuss or understand, uh, please leave those comments and we'll try to answer them in the comment section, but also we can do further videos uh, in the future to address those questions. Thanks very much, guys.